If you haven't seen Deadpool, but you like what you see from Deadpool 2's amazing marketing campaign, then you should probably go rent Deadpool. It's pretty hilarious, but it's not for kids. Even though the sequel is only the second movie in the series, it's part of the long-running, extra-confusing X-Men franchise. Making matters even crazier, Deadpool 2 is bringing in a ton of extra heroes from the comics. If you're planning to see the Merc with a mouth in action, but just don't have the time for Deadpool, or maybe you just want to know who all these new people are, here's everything you need to know before seeing Deadpool 2. Mr. Pool Deadpool is Wade Wilson, a mercenary with a military black ops past. The first job we see him work is scaring a nerdy pizza delivery guy out of stalking the object of his obsession. He uses the money he gets from the gig for a night of fun with his soon-to-be main squeeze, Vanessa. Wilson and Vanessa spend a wild year together until Wilson learns he's dying from cancer. With no other options available, Wilson agrees to undergo an experimental treatment that he's told will turn him into a superhero. He doesn't learn until later that the program's patients are actually superpowered slaves sold off to the highest bidder. The experiments give Wilson the ability to heal from just about any wound, but they also make his skin look like Freddy Krueger's. On his off time, Wilson frequents a bar called Sister Margaret's that's patronized mainly by mercenaries. The bar's owner, Weasel, hosts a Deadpool in which the rowdy customers can bet on who among them will die next, which inspires Wilson's codename. Deadpool's staple move is breaking the fourth wall. He knows he's a fictional character, and he revels in it. His movie takes plenty of pot shots at other superhero movies, particularly the X-Men series. The character, played by Ryan Reynolds, also pokes fun at Reynolds himself through jokes about his performances in Green Lantern and X-Men Origins Wolverine. The Cable Guy There was a time in the 90s when it seemed like just about every new X-Men character was from some kind of dystopian alternate future. Cable is one of these time-crossed refugees. Played by Josh Brolin, Cable is Nathan Summers, the child of Cyclops and a clone of Jean Grey, who's sent into the future and returns initially to take over command of the X-Men's junior team, the New Mutants. Cable's cybernetic enhancements are due to a lethal techno-organic virus slowly turning his body into a machine. Luckily, he's also a mutant with telepathic and telekinetic powers, which he uses to keep the virus at bay. That's the Cable of the comics, but we don't know how different the Cable of Deadpool 2 will be, just that he'll be from the future, he's a cyborg, and he's a formidable warrior. We also know that Cable has come to the present with his sights on a teenager named Russell for reasons unknown. Speaking of whom, the new kid. The kid that Cable's hunting in the trailers remains shrouded in mystery. We know his name is Russell and that he seems to have pyrokinetic powers, giving us a solid idea of his comic inspiration. Russell is likely inspired by Rusty Collins, aka Fire Fist. First appearing in the pages of X Factor, he's able to manipulate fire, much like Pyro from X-Men 2. What we still don't know is what Cable wants with him. Does Russell somehow cause the dark future that Cable's from, or is this solely a mission of personal vengeance? Either way, Deadpool takes up the cause of defending the kid, assembling a new team to take Cable out. The Luckiest Lady Nina Thurman, aka Domino, is the end result of a government breeding project designed to produce the perfect killer. Domino is surrounded at all times by a probability field that affects her and her enemies. Try to shoot at Domino, and there's a good chance your gun will jam or even explode in your face. If Domino leaps from the top of a tall building with no plan of survival, something is likely to come along and cushion or stop her fall. Much like Deadpool, Domino's relationships with Marvel's other mutants tend to be somewhat tenuous. Unlike the X-Men, she's no moral crusader, but she'll often work alongside them if there's an opportunity for fun, profit, or both. She first appeared in the pages of the X-Men comic X-Force, making her a natural fit for the version of the team assembling in Deadpool 2. Pure Bedlam Introduced during 1995's alternate universe Age of Apocalypse event, Bedlam was originally the collective name of two brothers, Jesse and Christopher Aronson. After that story wrapped up, Jesse Aronson was reintroduced in the pages of X-Force. Bedlam produces an electromagnetic field that allows him to disrupt different forms of energy, creating havoc in both people and machines. He's also a martial arts expert. Again, there's no way to know until opening day how faithful Terry Crews' portrayal will be to the comics, only that, like his comic book counterpart, Bedlam will be joining the ranks of X-Force. Who is Shatterstar? If you think Cable's origin story is convoluted, wait till you meet Shatterstar. In the comics, Shatterstar is from a place called Mojo World, 
a planet that exists a century in the future and is ruled by the tyrannical villain Mojo. Mojo World is obsessed with entertainment, and Shatterstar was a slave who was genetically engineered to be a gladiator. He has enhanced strength and agility, heals faster than most, is a master at many different fighting styles, can channel shockwaves through weaponry, and can even open portals allowing people to instantly teleport wherever they'd like. As far as his origin in Deadpool 2 is concerned, it's likely it will have nothing to do with Mojo World. But considering how much Deadpool made fun of comic book movie tropes, who knows? We could have a scene with Cable, Bedlam, and Shatterstar all comparing dystopian futures, debating whose is worse. Peter and Hydra Bob Who is Peter? Well, the short answer is that we don't know. There's some speculation that he's Deadpool 2's answer to longtime Deadpool comics character Hydra Bob. Hydra Bob is, on the surface, a kind of useless sidekick to Deadpool. He's cowardly, bad at fighting, and has absolutely no special skills. He's a member of Hydra who will often cite Hydra training maxims such as, if I can't see them, they can't see me, and hiding behind each other. He generally responds to every situation by running away. The character actually had an unofficial cameo in Deadpool. He's never referred to as Hydra Bob because 20th Century Fox didn't have the rights to that character. But Deadpool calls him Bob, and they briefly talk about working together in Jacksonville. He's among the only ones of Ajax henchmen that Deadpool knocks unconscious and doesn't kill. Wait? Oh my god, I haven't seen you since Jacksonville. Since, uh, DGI Friday! Fridays. It's possible that Fox wanted a Hydra Bob for Deadpool 2 and simply created their own schlub with a different name because they didn't have the rights. Not that Marvel Universe. Though Deadpool is a Marvel Comics character, he doesn't live anywhere near the mostly family-friendly Disney-owned Marvel Cinematic Universe. Though Deadpool is not technically a mutant, he's one of the many Marvel characters owned by 20th Century Fox as part of the movie rights to the X-Men's roster of heroes and villains. So Deadpool doesn't have to worry about going up against Thanos anytime soon, even though both characters are played by Josh Brolin. Disney is currently in the process of buying and merging with Fox, meaning that actual crossovers will likely be possible in the future. But until then, Deadpool is most definitely banned from Disney World. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.